Alrighty, well, it's a new year and it's time to answer some basic questions. So if you're an advanced harmonica player, go away. This is not a this is not for you unless you want to just have some fun. I'm going to address one of those questions that beginning harmonica players No, that's not a beginning harmonica. Beginning harmonica player is this guy or this gal. That's you. So the a question that I had when I was starting out, I'm 59 years old, when I was 16, when I got my first harmonica, a question that pre preoccupied me. So I mean, I, I got a first one. I think I got a C and an A. Those are two good keys. But I, I constantly was saying like, what's the bluesiest harmonica? What's the, is it, what, what key? I mean, now I play Honer Marine Band. I'll be honest about that. I've been doing that for, for decades. Uh, I'm an endorser. I, I, I love them. Um, and I wouldn't, it just so happens that I've been playing them since I started, and I continue to like them, love them. Um, but what keys, let's assume it doesn't really matter what brand or model, like what's the bluesiest key? Are there certain keys that are better for blues? And the first thing to understand, obviously, is that this C, and this is, would not be obvious, this C is sort of right in the middle of the standard key. So the thing you have to do is create in your head a thing that says G is the lowest standard key. It's a low, it's like the truck. Now the harmonicas are all set up with the same relationships between the notes. If I go, that was on a G. I can make exactly the same combination of mouth shapes, and I can do a riff that's the same, it's just transposed down, right? Transposed down, the C is gonna do that riff higher, but they're the same. So once you learn on one harp, you can move around to different harps. But here's the key thing, each of them has a different personality, and each key has a different personality. Now I've done uh, a, a video, sort of why do harmonica players need so many harps? This is a slightly different video. This is just much more kind of like the most basic beginner question, is there a particularly bluesy key? And the answer is no. There is no particularly bluesy key. There are certain keys that are played much less often. And so, you know, the key of F sharp, if G is the lowest, by the way, then F sharp is the highest in terms of conventional um, sort of, it goes G to F sharp. Now there's a high G, but it's called a high G. The F sharps is called an F sharp. I don't even think I have an F sharp around these days, not a, not a regular one. Here's an F. So this would be a good point of comparison. Let's start with three harps. I got, I got three. I got the G, um, I've got the C, and I've got the F. It feels like three card Monty. See which ones I got? So let me just play a basic riff. I'm gonna go one draw, two blow, two draw. Okay, that was on the G. That was on the C. Okay, three, it's like having the baritone sax, the tenor sax, I guess you'd say, tenor alto, and then the soprano. So the um, tenor and alto are a little bit different, but the, the, the G is the baritone sax. Is this a bluesy key? Well, yeah, what makes for a particularly bluesy key? Obviously, certain individual instruments are, for whatever reason, all set up really well. So every once in a while, I'll get one. It doesn't matter what key. I got a B flat at one point, 10 years ago, and it led me to create hundreds of YouTube videos, most of them in, in the key on a B flat harp. Everybody said, why do you use a B flat? Well, I had a really, really good sounding B flat. So that's number one. What's the bluesiest sounding harp? It's the one that sounds bluesiest to you. Now this is totally unscientific, it's totally not the way the pros talk, and yet it, this is true, which is if you feel inspired by a particular instrument, don't doubt it, don't question it, accept it, value it, cherish it, and say, I gotta, I'm feeling this bluesy thing with this particular instrument. And it may shift over time, or you may just say, that's the one. That's the one. And every once in a while you get lucky that way, so it doesn't really matter about the keys. Here's another way to think about it. Let me just back off and talk about which keys are bluesy. There are certain songs that are, or certain players who played a lot in certain keys. Sonny Terry played a lot on A harps and B flat harps. And so if I'm thinking about Sonny Terry, let me go and get an A harp. Um, or a Key to the Highway. I remember years ago hearing
if you want the Sonny Terry sound, that may sound like an A harp, may feel like a particularly bluesy key to you, or a, a B flat harp. Which key harp is the bluesiest harp? Well, I personally don't think that the G is the bluesiest. It's just not a harp I particularly like. It's real low. It's like driving a truck. Um, it's good for certain kinds of train songs. And you may say, well, the G, the G is the bluesiest one for me, Adam. You may say that, and that's fine. So if that's your preference for me, G's not the bluesiest. But if I want a train song, G's a really good one. And there are people who like that low, mournful sound. In fact, for, for really slow, mournful, maybe it is the bluesiest one. Wait a minute. Maybe I'll use that riff and we'll decide, right? You help me. Well, the answer is a G can be perfectly bluesy. Now, what about an A flat? So let's move up a half step. Who plays A flat? Well, I play A flat when I do Pride and Joy by Stevie Ray Vaughan because he tunes his guitar down to the key of E flat and he plays this song in E flat. Well, an A flat harp, one thing you'll learn if you keep up with this, is we're going to play cross harp. And I'm going to play this A flat harp in the key of E flat, very unusual guitar key, unless you're tuning your guitar down. I mean, guitar players don't want to play in E flat particularly. <laughs> Heard something go wrong there. I don't know. If you can play bluesily, I guess it sounds bluesy. Well, that brings us back to the A. This is a this is kind of a tweaked custom harp. Well, let me tell you one thing. If you go down to G and then A flat and come into an A from those low harps, A is going to feel really it's going to feel a lot higher and more manageable than it felt before that. I always had a tough time on A early on. I used to soak them because they'd play louder and, and more aggressively. I don't do that anymore, but you have to master an A and you have to be able to get a bluesy sound. Let's see. Now, here's an extremely important thing. If you're moving around from harp to harp and you get so you're really dialed in on the energies that it takes to bend the notes properly, to kind of make the right sounds, each harp requires a little bit different seasoning for each of the notes that you play. This is an un, uh, not something that, that beginners would understand it at all. We wouldn't be aware of it. But So I just overplayed that A harp because I was working really hard on the G. You have to work harder on the low harps. Also, of course, it's a custom harp. So maybe if I got just a normal A, which is to say a normal off the shelf. Let me do that. Now that sounds bluesy, right? A? So A is a good bluesy key. Uh, we'll go to A. All right. Well, B flat. B flat coming off an A. B flat. I, to me, B flat is one of the, the great keys. And here's a secret. Somebody once told me if you're uh, going to be testing out a mic and an amp, use a B flat harp. Just, it's low enough. It's got a foot in the low stuff so it can. Uh uh. But the high notes, mm -hmm. so B flat, I love B flat. So with my little duo, the Blues Doctors, we do a lot of stuff on a B flat harp. For years though, I had to play an A harp, play along with Sterling Mr. Satan McGee, so the A became kind of a bread and butter one for me, but B flat a little easier to play, I think, than an A. That's, that's my own feeling. It's a little higher. 
Now, I don't have a B harp here. B is an unusual key. It, it, it's uh, in each of these harps. It has they might be tuned slightly differently relative to ordinary pitch. I don't. I'm actually not sure of that. But B is a is a strange key. Very. It's not a key you use very often. The B harp. The C, of course, is the reference standard. It's what all, every beginner gets. And I'll believe. You know, believe it or not, I used to think that C harps just weren't very bluesy. And then, you know, it, believe it or not, it wasn't the harp. It was me, and I'm not sure what it was about it. Turned out the C harp was perfectly bluesy. It's right in the middle, which means the high, the low notes are still. You got some low. So C, you can't go wrong. So C, yes, it is just as bluesy as uh, any other key you might find. D flat. Is D flat the bluesiest key? Well, I, I, I like to joke that D flat is the bluesiest key because it's a lonely key because nobody ever takes it out of the, the harp box because who wants to play in the key of D flat or A flat, right? Nobody, horn players maybe, but in blues, it's very unusual. You'd rather play in G or A. That's why I like D flat. It's an unusual key. But I'm very comfortable with D flat. Again, I say it's a hard, don't overlook the D flat. A lot of people do. Does that sound bluesy to you? Okay, D flat D. Well, obviously D is a custom D harp. Again, a little more expensive, but it's just it's D is a great key. It's now you're starting to get into the what it would feel to me like the higher harps. And to me, D flat's the bridge, and and it closer to in some ways in spirit to a C harp. When you get to D, you're getting something bright. You're getting something that um, doesn't have a lot of bottom end. It's not yet a soprano sax, but it's an alto. There's no question a D harp is an alto sax. It's a good, you know, country players like it. It moves quick, so if you need to do a lot of super quick. Ah! Many years ago, I was in a show called Big River, the Broadway show, and um, I had to do something called the Entract, which was. And I was playing along with a, a ne top Nashville fiddle player um, and, and like a, a jazz fusion guitar player. And these guys were both on stage with me. And I'm just a blues harmonica player off the streets of Harlem, literally, at that point. I had left a, a Harlem gig behind to play with these guys. So D harp, you learn how to play fast. And luckily, it was in, a, it was in the key of A, so I used this D harp. All right, we're moving up. We just got two more before we get to F, so E flat. I think E flat could be the bluesiest key, and I'm not sure why. I, I do a song called "Every Day I Have the Blues," the famous uh, song. But E flat, it's a key that horn players like, and I, I I did a lot of copying of horn players. Well, every day, a day I have the blues. Every day, day I have the blues. It could just be. Now, this is one of my theories. My my voice sits right relative to those particular pitches. So, and that would be in the key of it's an E flat harp. I'm playing it in B flat. Is an E flat harp the bluesiest key? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Next to the E harp, <clears throat> boogie thing, James Cotton. Get to this, an E obviously is a high harp. An E is a high harp. It doesn't get played a lot, but it gets played enough. And it's and it's really one of those, it's for the key of B. We're playing cross harp in B, which is a, a key you see occasionally, Red House. There's a Red House over yonder. Jimi Hendrix does Red House in B. So this is a sort of long-winded answer to the question. 
which harp which harp is the bluesiest key one thing is you know what keys what songs you're going to be playing along with when i think of an e harp i think of the many times i've played along with red house um there's a few other tunes that you end up playing on but uh uh the thrill is gone sometimes is in the key of b minor and i might use a an e harp and tore down Well, I'm tore down. Whoa, terrible. Well, I'm tore down. Almost level with the ground. Yes, I'm tore down. Almost level with the ground. Well, I feel like this when my baby can't be found. Okay, so an E harp is obviously in the running for bluesiest harp key. And finally we end up with the F, which is to play in the key of C. You'll learn this at some point, but it's what we, this, this cross harp thing. An F harp, what's the bluesiest harp? Well, when I think of an F harp, I think about playing along with piano players. If you ever sit down next to a piano player who's playing blues, there's a, not, there's a decent chance that piano player is going to be playing in C. So C is a high key. It's not. It's a hard key to comp in. When I say C, I'm sorry. The F harp is a high. It's a very high harp to comp with. You know what I mean by comp? If you're going to play along with somebody, you have to really watch it. By the same token, it's it's the one that Magic Dick used on Pack Fair and Square. So an F harp is a in your face loud high harp. We've come such a long way from this G. Yeah, you, know, you may decide that for those slow, quiet blues, a G harp, that low G. Might be the bluesiest harp for you. Or you might decide. That's all from me. This is Adam Gusso, and uh, Happy New Year. We'll be seeing you down the road. Bye-bye.